This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Paul here. Today I'm going to talk about how I gained 85 pounds in six months at 47 years old. I know it's ridiculous. It surprised me how much I put on this past year. And uh, it was a really weird, wild ride. I don't exactly understand all of it and what, what happened. Some of it, I have theories on it, but I'm going to talk talk about it. Uh, um, my, my coach, Justin Harris, said it was one of the cra craziest uh, off-seasons he's ever seen. Um, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I, I have my theories on it, but uh, we'll dig into it here in just a second. Before I do so, please take the time to subscribe to my channel. It is the best way you can show your appreciation for all this awesome content that I'm putting out there for fucking free, guys. I should be charging for this shit. If you want to get in contact with me about coaching or a consultation call, you can do so by emailing me at bigp3rd at gmail.com. Or you can shoot me a DM on Instagram at Paul K. Barnett. Both are in the video description. Uh, if you have questions, comments, or you want to tell me I'm full of shit or I'm a horrible person that people love to do these days, you can do so um, in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer each and every one of you, even the assholes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if you uh, like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Okay, so 85 pounds in six months. It was a wild and crazy ride, guys. I can tell you that. I mean, you can see you can see the picture over here on the left. This was me right the week of my contest. I, <laughs> to be honest with you, I was pretty fucking emaciated. We, we got a little carried away with the diet, and I got very flat and very small. Um, so that's you know that accounts for part of the weight gain, just, just to be transparent with you. So I, I, I didn't, you know, nobody's gaining 85 pounds of muscle in six months. That's not how this works. Uh, we'll, we'll see what it actually translates into for stage weight this year. Um, but you, you, you can see it was, it was a pretty crazy amount of weight gain. The, the picture on the left um, was from right around the, uh, the first week of August, right around my contest. Uh, I think it was a couple days before my contest. It was before I got my, my tan put on. Uh, and then the picture on the right was uh, from January, the beginning of January, when I ended my off-season blast. And I was 185 pounds on the picture on the left, and I was 271, 272, something like that. I have 270 on here at the picture on the right. That was my daytime walking around weight. Uh, if you look at my uh, uh, physique updates that I do for my contest prep, I use... Um, I use my uh, morning fasted weight. I, I think my morning fasted weight was something like 266, 265 at the end of the off season. Um, and then a pre-contest, pre I don't remember what it was, uh, 180, something like that. Um, so you can see here uh, the mandatory comparisons, the uh, front relaxed. Um, you can see where I, I was at and where I'm at now. You can see I've accumulated a lot more body hair <laughs> than what I had at the time of contest prep, I probably should shave that down so you can get an honest view. I really put some size on my legs. Uh, my legs really blew up. Uh, uh, I think part of it was that my legs had shriveled up from the end of the end of the contest prep. I, I don't know what that was about. I think I overdid the cardio. I was doing a lot of hit cardio, and I think the hit cardio just nuked my legs. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I know that's an old guy problem. A lot of old guys have a hard time hanging on the size on their legs as they deplete um, for a contest. Uh, you can see the side, this the side uh, shot here. Um, I, I, you know, contest prep. I had striations in my glutes. I really made an, a, a a conscious effort this weekend to, or this this off season that weekend to work on bringing up my arms and bringing up my hamstrings and glutes. I felt like both of them were were very deficient. Um, I also brought up my lats as well. Part of that's just shitty posing. Um, but uh, you can see, you can see I, you know, this, I didn't have much meat on my hamstring. You can see the separation here now to where my hamstring was. I'll put a lot more on there and a lot more um, on my glutes. I, I now have, as part of my training routine, I have a glute and hamstring focused day for leg day. I, I have a leg day that's more um, quad focused and a leg day that's more glute, hamstring, and adductor focused. So I, I made a conscious effort to bring 
those body parts up. Same thing with my arms. I really cranked up the volume on my arms. I did a lot of volume for my arms this past year. And I went with lighter weights and higher reps to try to bring up my arms. And I, I added a couple inches, an inch and a half, something like that. I don't know. I don't measure them regularly to my arms. I already had a pretty full chest and a big back, so I wasn't too too overly concerned about that. Um, you can see the back shots here. Um, you know, I brought up my, you can see where I really brought up my hot triceps. Same thing here. You can see my adductors, my hamstrings, my back really, really filled out this, this past off season. I do carry a lot of fat on my back. Um, that is a problem that I have. I, I think a lot of guys, that's kind of the last place that they, they carry it. Um, so here's the question everybody's once was going to want to know, and I, I'm sure people are going to think I'm full of shit. Uh, but what gear I used this, this past off season, uh, when I came out of contest prep, and I think this is a huge mistake that guys make out of contest prep. They, they've got this thing, thing in their head that they, they need to come completely off the clean out, which, which I get your, your blood work is all fucked up after you come out of, out of contest prep and you do, you do need to let your body heal and, and get better. But I think you can back down the doses, take something safe. And I, I saw it in my own blood work, my blood work imp improved dramatically um i did not come completely off i did a slow ramp down over a period of six weeks when i came off of of, of contest prep and i ran i ran i came out of contest prep running 500 milligrams of test um 300 milligrams i added in pp and i was not running that at at the time of contest but i added in the week after i came out of contest prep to help fill me back out and to help with my joints that were creaky from from contest prep so i added that in and what i what i did over a six week period of time i backed the 500 uh slowly incrementally backed the 500 down to 250 and i started off with a 300 mpp ran that for a couple weeks and then slowly backed that off to down to nothing um same thing with the gh i started off at six units i was at eight units during contest prep I, I don't like running eight units. Eight units is too much for me. I get real, I, I've tried pushing up to eight. I, I've gone up as high as 10 before, but around eight, I start having glucose control issues. And I also have issues with my hands going numb and I, I can't feel my damn hands. I, I, I have to type all day long for work. I like, I'm a musician. I play the guitar, um, things like that, that I, I can't do if my hands are fucked up. So I, I, to me, it's not worth it. So I, six units seems to be the sweet spot. I did, I did, you know, so I, I slowly ramped down the GH coming into my, my, my six week ramp down after my, my contest. So I did six units of GH and slowly ramped down to two. I was running 15 units of Lantus a day um, post contest. I was not running Lantus during the contest. You don't need it when you're carb depleted, but I was eating a shit ton of food. <laughs> Probably not the cleanest food after the contest because I went a little bit on a binge for a couple of weeks after the contest was over. Um, that was just to help deal with the with the sugar I was eating. Uh, human log on high days, 500 milligrams of metformin. Uh, the metformin actually went the other way. I started ramping that up as I went 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 through but I, I didn't run any metformin at the end of my contest prep i didn't really need it uh because my insulin sensitivity was in a good spot um so after that six week ramp down i did a six week cruise so there was really just kind of a 12 week period of where i slowly ramped down my gear from the contest prep i think it was up around two grams of total gear for contest prep at the end that is a ramp up and then ramp down i i i, I don't I don't know. To me, it seems unproductive to just come back down right away and crash. That's that's my two cents. You take it for what it's worth. Um, but then I, I I backed down to 250 milligrams of test. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke here. But two, it was actually two units of GH that I was running um, during my cruise and 15 units of Lantus per day, 500 milligrams of metformin and. I actually continued to progress on my cruise. I think my body was in such a state uh, that it was so receptive to food at that time. It didn't really take much of anything to grow because it was so depleted from the contest prep. I just had a crazy rebound phase of about eight to 10 weeks where I just kept blowing up and blowing up and blowing up and blowing up. And I stayed lean. 
Um, and I really started accumulating uh, body fat until I got into the full-blown off-season phase. Uh, I wish I had a picture up here of about eight weeks post-contest, but I put on like 40 pounds in, in about eight weeks, not running really much of anything, and I looked great. Uh, my off-season blast, I did a 12-week blast, which is shorter than I normally like to run. I, I normally like to do a 16- to 20-week blast off-season, but my show's earlier this year, so I didn't have enough time to fit it in. It is what it is. Um, I ran less gear this year than what I did last year. I wanted to try to be a little more conservative with it since I was riding a good rebound. I didn't want to push too hard. I, I wanted to use just what I needed to progress. And so, so what I'll do is start off low and I start adding more. And as long as I'm progressing, I'll stay at a certain dose. So where I, I didn't start the cycle with anything predetermined or, or anything in mind. I just kind of listened to my body, up the dosages as I hit the wall, as I got stuck. So I started off around 375 milligrams of test at the beginning of the 12-week blast, and I ended up at 750 by the time I was done. I didn't use any AI. I didn't, I didn't need it. I found that I didn't need it, and I, ran 100, I started off with 150 milligrams of equipoise and ran 600. Um, I was at 600 by the, I don't know, week eight or so. In the last four weeks, I kind of ran the same thing. I started off with 15 units of Lantus and pushed up to 25, I think even 30 at one point. My blood sugar got a little out of whack during the the off-season blast. I, I'm, I don't know, that's a story for another day, but my, I don't know if I'm diabetic, pre-diabetic, what, what, what the fuck ever, but uh, my body just didn't couldn't seem to handle the carbs without exogenous insulin, so I had to use exogenous insulin. I ramped up from two units of GH up to six. I probably did that over the first four to six weeks of the of, of the off season. Human log on high days. I, I have a video up about my insulin protocol if you want to check it out and see how it works. Um, I went from a thousand to fifteen hundred milligrams of, of metformin. Um, I did back the metformin back down to a thousand at one point, but um, I was my like I said my fasted blood blood glucose got a little high there for a period of time it was like 115 120 it was running consistently which is pre-diabetic levels normally i'm in the 90s which still you know that's below you know what what a doctor would consider normal for bodybuilding purposes we probably want to wake up in the morning in the below 90 but that i don't know it's just my genetics everybody in my family did not is diabetic my, my father my uncle my grandmother uh, they all, they are diabetics by the time they were my age. So it just, I don't know. It just is what it is. Um, and I use X forge for, um, blood pressure. I didn't need any when I was on contest prep. I usually, when I get about halfway through contest prep, my blood pressure in the past, what I've had issues with is my, my blood pressure actually starts to get too low and I feel like I'm going to pass out. So I have to drop the blood pressure medicine. I guess it's a good thing. Uh, but in the off season, I needed it as I added more compounds in and started accumulating weight. Um, I, my blood pressure went up. I don't, I don't, my cutoff is I don't like to let it get much higher than 135 over 85 ish or so. Ideally, I want to be in that 120 over 70 range, so I will adjust my blood pressure med doses to accommodate that blood pressure. So I, I, I want to stay in that range. I check my blood pressure daily in the off-season. I know a lot of guys don't. I also check my glucose levels daily in the off-season. I know a lot of guys don't. I think most people should. You'll have better control over your health if you do. Um, training, I completely switched up my training this past year. I went to a Renaissance periodization, uh, style program. I, um, read Dr. Mike Israel's book on hypertrophy training. I, I, during contest prep, I kind of became obsessed with his protocols. I used to be a hit Dorian Yates, Dante Trudell style trainer, and I am getting old. I'm beat up. I've got joint problems. I'm falling apart, and I just can't lift heavy anymore without fucking myself up. And I thought, I, I read through Mike's book, and it made a lot of sense. And I looked at a bunch of, you know, Menno Henselman's, Dr. Brad Schoenfield, 
Schoenfeld, I'm sorry, I think Schoenfeld, uh, that's correct. I, I went through and read a bunch of their books, research, things like that, and it, it seems like all of the current scientific literature points to volume being the primary motivator for hypertrophy. And I switched my training up to be more of a volume style training. I didn't really focus on on um, weights that much. I, I really lightened my weights up. I used the lightest weights I've ever used. Um, I, I didn't even come close. And I, for the most part, I got rid of the heavy compound moves. I didn't do any deadlifts. I didn't do any squats. And I didn't do any bench press this off season. Not one. Um, and people probably are not going to believe that. I went to mostly dumbbells and machines. I kept all my reps on what I consider compound movements to 10 to 12 reps. And on isolation movements, I did 15 to 20 reps. So my rep ranges were a lot higher. I did not take anything to absolute failure. Not once did I go to absolute failure. I always kept a little bit in the gas tank. And I really, really focused on on getting a firm contraction in the muscle and feeling the muscle and making sure I got a good pump in that muscle. My routine was six days a week, so it's a high frequency, high volume program. I did push legs, pull, push legs, pull, off. Uh, that's the way I, six days a week of lifting. Um... And I would do four to five week blocks of training where in that four to five weeks, I would go from minimum, minimum effective volume up to maximum recoverable volume. I have another video up about my training. If you want to see where I go into detail about how it works, I have spreadsheets and whatnot. You can go through and take a look at it. But in effect, the minimum effective volume is what the minimum volume that it's that I that is needed for me to maintain my current size and the maximum recoverable volume is the max I can go without overtraining. I found after pushing my volume up for about four to five weeks that I would hit the wall usually around the five week mark. If I went past five weeks, I dug myself into a recovery hole and it was too much. So four to five weeks seems to be the sweet spot to where you need to back off. And when I back off, I would, I would go back down to minimum effective volume and then just start working my way back up again. Um, Cardio, I was doing four 12-minute uh, um, hit sessions per week, mostly. There were some weeks I kind of skimped on the cardio, I, I won't lie. Um, I, I'm not the best about doing cardio in the off-season. I tried to be better about it this year. Ma the main reason you do cardio in the off-season um, is just for cardiovascular health, to help keep that blood pressure in check, help keep your heart healthy. Um, so... Issues I ran into, I will tell you, putting that much weight on that fast does cause problems. I'd be lying to you if 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 I did, and I I was a, a bit concerned about my health at my age. I don't know if it's smart to put on that much weight, but my body just kind of did what it did. Um, my my blood pressure started to rise during during the cycle. I am very aware of my blood pressure, and I try to take proactive steps to manage it. A lot of guys don't. I have videos up about it, but blood pressure is usually what kills guys. It just is. Um, my blood sugar rose um, as I went into the off-season blast. It, it kept going up. It kept going up. Kept going up. I was having issues with my blood pressure, or I mean blood sugar. Sorry. Um, and I kept having to ramp up the metformin. I kept having to ramp up the Lantus. I kept having to use more berberine and more um, Humalog. I think I'm in probably some state of diabetes or, or, or end stage pre-diabetes. I don't know. I haven't been formally diagnosed. Um, but I, I'm probably diabetic at this point. I don't know. Um, it's during contest prep. I don't seem to need the insulin in the bur berberine, but I'm using very low carbs. I, it seems that my body just does not make enough insulin to keep up with the car high carbohydrate demand in the off season. Um, and the reason I say that is because the, I, I tried running higher doses of metformin thinking that it was an insulin sensitivity issue, but that made very little difference at all. Uh, but when I ramped up the Lantus, I brought it back down. So to me, that is an indicator that my body is not making enough insulin to keep up with the carbohydrates that I'm putting, putting in. So 
my body seems to be making some insulin, but not enough to keep up with, you know, a thousand grams of carbs. I don't know that many people my age could keep up with that, that much carbs. So you have to take exogenous insulin to, to manage that. It's just probably the way it is. My, I, I, I have another video up where my, uh, at w what my blood work looked like at the end of the blast. If you want to take a look at that. Uh, really, the only thing that was off was my lipids. Everything else was normal. My hematocrit was just a tad high. It was like at 51. I don't get that concerned about 51. Uh, that's just just over the normal limit. Um, I mean, when you're taking equipoise, it's just kind of the cost of doing business. Uh, my HDL was 33, which is a tad low. It should be 40. My triglycerides were 151, which is too high. And usually when your triglycerides are high, that is an indicator that your uh, your glucose metabolism is fucked up. So that goes along with my issues with me, you know, thinking that I, maybe I'm diabetic or pre-diabetic. Or that I'm definitely pre-diabetic, but that maybe I'm diabetic. So usually when I see high triglycerides in guys, it's because they're 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 running high blood sugars and they're they're. I assume that the liver is just spitting out triglycerides, converting the sugars into triglycerides. Um, LDL cholesterol was just a tad high. That should be below 100. So not the end of the fucking world. Uh, that's just mainly from just crushing a lot of food. Uh, I was eating a lot of steak, probably from the steak, I'm guessing. Usually LDL is, you know, not always something. The liver can also make LDL, but uh, typically that is a, that is a dietary thing when that gets really, really high. Um... The HDL, I don't know what else I can do to get it up. I it, 33 seems to be where it stays. It doesn't matter if I'm on contest prep or if I'm in whatever. My, my Here's the funny thing. After crushing all the orals and taking a shit ton of gear, at the end of contest prep, my lipids were perfect. <laughs> my LDL, LDL was like 50. It was crazy low. And my, H, my HDL was, was, right, was actually higher at the end of contest prep, which is really fucking weird after crushing all the orals. You would think it would be the exact opposite, but it wasn't. My triglycerides were low as well, um, which makes sense because I wasn't eating, wasn't eating a ton of carbs. Uh, another thing I will say is I got a lot... When I, when I first got out of contest prep, it seemed to subside over a period of time. I got a lot of inflammation, which worries me in my ankles, in my lower legs, you have to be careful about blood clots in circulation. And a lot of times accumulation of water in the lower extremities can be a sign of congestive heart failure. Um, so it's just something else to be careful of. I mean, when I did a physical, my, my, my heart checked out fine. So who knows? I think it was just from eating a shit ton of salt, eating like an asshole. I, I did go a little ape shit there the first month or so after my, my contest. Um, and then, then once I got into my off season, I got things cleaned up. I, I actually got to a point where I didn't want to eat. I was ready for contest prep. Uh, the diet, this is kind of the peak diet in the off, off, off season. Um, low day, I was doing 300, uh, carbs, 300, um, protein, 60 added fat. Um, you know, that was right around 3000 calories. That was my low day. That's an off, one day a week, off day from gym. Uh, medium day, which I was doing in the off season, I was doing three days per week. Uh, my medium day was 330 grams of protein, uh, 550 grams of carbs, 28 grams of added fat. So we are at 3,500. We're about 4,000 calories on those days. Um, well, my uh, high day, which was two days per week, I typically do my high day on leg day. And I do two leg days a week. Um, I was doing uh, 250 grams of protein, um, right around 900 grams of carbs, and as close to zero fat as possible. Um, this is technically 40, right around 4,600 calories, but my last meal of the day on that day is a cheat meal, so I was probably eating closer to 5,500, 6,000. And I was fully availing myself of cheat meals in the off season. Um, uh, you know, I, I was eating a shit ton of food. Uh, so, um, I definitely ate a lot of food this off season. I tried to keep it clean when I would go out, but I, you know, I would have a robust cheat meal. You know, I'd get a nice fatty steak, like a ribeye, um, a potato a salad. And then sometimes I would eat dessert. Just depends. Not always. Um, uh, but, or go get barbecue, something like that. 
um, it's a typical cheap meal for me. Uh, um, uh, kebabs, that's another go-to for me for off-season. I'll go get a, eat a shit ton of kebabs, rice, and, and um, the naan bread or whatever it is that, that it comes with it. Um, anyway, that's about all I've got on it. If you've got questions, comments, your thoughts on how I gained this weight, if you think I'm full of shit, you can let me know in the comment section. I will tell you, it's, it's really weird because I did run less gear than I did last year, and I made way more progress. So I think the, I, you know, in summary, I think the big difference was is the training, running insulin um, through the entire offseason, which I didn't do last year. I think that helped me um, help with partitioning those carbs better and running a higher, higher, the higher metformin so i think the metformin the carbs and the training all kind of synergize together the high volume training uh, helped pull all that stuff into the muscle the car the insulin helped drive that process and then the metformin kept the muscles very insulin sen sensitive so that's my theory um it took less gear to get there uh, we'll see, we'll see what it translates into the stage. It doesn't mean shit if it doesn't, uh, actually translate into stage weight. So, uh, we'll see what I look like at the end of contest prep. All right, guys, take care.